So let's come in studio and uh, have a little uh, discussion on this. We've been joined by Megdad Mohammed. He is a researcher and a policy analyst with the Institute of Energy and Securities. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Oh, to you. start with, um, it looks as if almost every key stakeholder or key voice in this discussion is, ex is not surprised mm. that we've come to this position. But from the position of the IES, do you think that... Um, heads must roll or some stringent action must be taken following this, uh, this unfortunate development? Well, first and foremost, thank you very much for, for having me. Uh, we actually saw this coming. Oh, you did? It was just a matter of time because you didn't want to jump the gun before the, the, the facts uh, came clear. Uh, before the takeover by PDS, there were some conditions they were, they were supposed to have met. And these conditions were put together by MIDA, which was supervising the transaction. If you leave uh, such transactions in the hands of the politicians, you know what happens. Mm. And it's for this reason that the US government with the uh, uh, compact put together MIDA for them to supervise uh, uh, this process so that at the end of the day, we can have operational and technical uh, uh, competence and efficiency in the management of the, downs uh, the power sector distribution. So uh, with the conditions, PDS uh, not meeting the conditions, uh, uh, they had an agreement of a sort, which was against the, the lease and assignment agreement they signed on 13, 13 July 2018. Uh, they were required to show proof of the existence of funds they were going to mm. invest. They were supposed to provide guarantees that were uh, uh, from banks, which were acceptable to all parties in the transaction, which they failed to do as at the time of the transaction. They were even given an, 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 an extra month uh, from February 2019 to March for them to do something. They still could not do that, but they went ahead and... So with all and these handed, red flags... Why did we then go ahead? I mean, from, 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 the, from the expert position mm. or the position of an institution like yours, why did you think, or from your position, why do you think governments went ahead to give the final approval? Well, it is, it is these actions, these particular moves that uh, uh, reinforced our conviction that there were some unseen hands behind the scenes who were willing to bend the rules to favor PDS for whatever reason. That's one of the reasons that people thought, no, ah, you can't be bending the rules this way. We had about 47 conditions precedent. Mm. PDS met about 21 of them. About uh, 26 were not met. And then the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Energy is on record. And they, they could come out and, 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 and state if this is not true. They transferred the conditions precedent to conditions subsequent, which means that conditions PDS was supposed to have met before they took over were now made into conditions they should meet mm. after they have taken over, mm. which is clearly against the agreements all the parties signed in August, uh, uh, in July 2018, before the takeover. And indeed, indeed, PDS itself had written to uh, MIDA, to the Finance Ministry and uh, the Energy Ministry, and copied MIDA, in which they were stating, and Philip, I used to sign that letter. Mm. We'll make it available to you as the days will be back. grateful. They stated clearly that they could not raise the amounts involved, and they were asking for uh, reinsurance. They wanted to uh, trans, 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 transfer the bond into okay. uh, insurance. That's where guarantee. That's where Al Kut came, into the, came into the picture. Even that move in itself is an illegality per the lease and assignment agreement. But fine, they were the selected parties. They are facing problems. Let's just give them the chance. Now PDS comes into the picture, and what they were doing was to reinforce their receivable collections, which is debts which people owed UCG. They okay. were intensifying to collect it and now present that cash as monies that they were reinvesting back into, into ECG, company. which is something that my mother at home can do. Mm. You just deploy police and military men and apply pressure and collect the money as receivables and present it that that's what you are reinvesting. Mm. And don't take my word for it. There is a reason why Nancy Pelosi is in this country. And it is not in anybody's interest to come out at this time. It is because there's a force that pushed things to come out at this particular time. So for, for us, it is, it, is, it is not something and, surprising. And, and finally on this, um, as an institution and uh, stakeholders that are also interested in this, and for all of us who are also parties to this, what is the next line of action, reasonable next line of action? Maybe a court case, you think? Well, the, the, the most important thing is that uh, Ghanaians want value for money, whether it is XYZ or PDS or ABC. We want to put on our light and get proper light. Oh, yeah. We want to have efficiency in, and, 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 and 
proper uh, 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 distribution in the in the power sector. So I know that as at now there, there's a lot of meetings going on. Some people are even meeting think tank people to try and skew the discussion in some way. Mm. The most important thing we must let the people of Ghana know is that something has gone wrong, and that wrong must be clearly stated. We must not treat this one like a Mary, where we skip goated the former uh, energy minister without looking down and seeing the people who gave him the advice on a Mary. Mm. There were people who were supposed to have done due diligence. There, we have to do two uh, basic due diligence here. Due diligence you do before the takeover right. and due diligence after the takeover. And so the due diligence after the takeover is what people are trying to emphasize, which is that after taking the guarantees, mm -hmm. now you check and you realize they are fake. No. The basic due diligence is that they say take the guarantee before, before you hand you over. You did over. not do that due diligence. That is what we want uh, 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 the, the people to know. That what, this happens to, is the what happens to the other shareholder, which is Maralco, they had gone through the right process. Mm. They are documenting. They, they, are, they, they, are, they are basically the, uh, P, the people PDS is, 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 is in for. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, certainly the discussion is still ongoing and subsequent bulletins and coming days. We'll try to break it down further so we can go all get a better appreciation of this issue. But thank you very much uh, for making time to speak with us. We've been uh, having a chat with a policy analyst and also a researcher with IES, Megdad Mohammed, and uh, helping us put into perspective this issue.